Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Those of you waking up this morning in the United States are already probably aware that Russia has actually launched cruise missiles inside of Syria, targeting ISIS targets, uh, which is something Russia has been doing more and more here lately, is targeting ISIS, trying to take them out, putting a stop to their movement uh, from Raqqa down towards Deir Azor. There's also been some reports that these are new types of missiles that Russia is experimenting with uh, just to see their reliability in this war inside of Syria. And yet, at the same time, tensions continue to rise between that of Russia, Syria, and the United States inside of Syria, and even Iran for that matter. We reported last night on Israeli News Live here that that uh, Russia had also, using the S-300 system, had taken out a U.S. drone over the skies of western Syria, right there on the coast of the Mediterranean. There are some that have actually argued that that's not so, because mainstream media has not reported it. But how many times have we actually shared with you breaking stories here on Israeli News Live that are happening in the theater there, taking weeks before the United States uh, media or European media ever even uh, brings this out, and in some cases don't even want to bring it out because of how it would look for the U.S. But oddly enough, as we also reported, there was an article that came out in American media saying that a U.S. drone had crashed in the mountains in California. Russian media and Polish media, both that we included the links on last night's broadcast, actually stated that that was uh, no doubt a cover-up for them losing the drone over the skies of western Syria near the Russian base. There was also reports that while Russia was firing these cruise missiles, there was a U.S. reconnaissance aircraft above head there, right above the ships there as Russia fired these off. Now, Russia did warn Israel and Turkey about the launch that they would be doing against the Islamic State inside of Syria. Also, another article that I caught this morning that was very interesting, and that was Haaretz was saying that uh, in their analysis, in Syria, U.S. focuses on ISIS while Israel eyes Iran. Trump is preoccupied with terror against the West, Netanyahu and IDF with the prospect of an Iran corridor from Tehran to Beirut. So according to Haaretz, it's kind of interesting to see that Haaretz is leaning towards the idea that while the U.S. is trying to take out ISIS, that Israel will deal with Iran. And of course, Jordan, Jordan joining in with them on that. But you know, it just seems to be absolutely a little bit, maybe not totally wrong what Haaretz is saying, but they are leaving out one important factor. And that is, is that the U.S. has been intentionally, I believe, have been intentionally striking at the Iranian proxies inside of Syria in order to draw Iran into a conflict to justify taking Iran down. And as they say they're busy with ISIS, well, maybe busy with trying to make sure that they move from Raqqa to Deir Azor is about the only busyness that I can really see. But that's not the only thing. In another article, before I go here to the Daily Caller that deals with this issue here, let me just share with you this one here. This article here that came out uh, in the Russian language on Live Journal, Alex 54 SAR, SAR, he actually writes a very in depth article and it's dealing with Russia's uh, fight inside of Syria. Now, he brings out something about Russia that the U.S. has claimed from the beginning, but yet was not believed by or ever stated by Russian media before. That Russia, for the first two years, never actually targeted, it did not target the, the ISIS forces as much, but instead was targeting the Free Syrian Army. Well... I probably would have to agree with him on that because, of course, the Free Syrian Army, backed by the United States, as we've been saying all along, it's been a proxy war. Now, I never thought that Russia wasn't targeting the Free Syrian Army or Al-Qaeda or Al-Nusra or any of the other fighting factions that have been, that have been uh, armed and strengthened by other uh, outside forces of the NATO coalition, but clearly, it's, uh, I did not think that Russia was not fighting ISIS. But as he brings out, it's only obvious in the latest rounds of attack that Russia has done against ISIS militants and the numbers that they have been killing by doing so that Russia did not target ISIS until really heavily until now. And maybe he is actually right on that. And of course, the U.S., although they may not be supporting ISIS, clearly have used, as John Kerry stated in that uh, 
hidden audio file that got released last year that they were watching ISIS, hoping that ISIS would remove Bashar al-Assad from power. Therefore, colluding with ISIS. As in the cases we reported last year when the U.S. forces targeted Syrian and Russian forces. Russia never wanted to admit to that either, but Russia lost 18 special forces when the U.S. targeted Deir Azzord there and was actually bombing the Syrian military and Russian, mili uh, mil uh, Russian special forces that were embedded with them, killing 18 Russian forces, some 63 Syrian forces back last year. Again, Israeli News Live brought out the facts of what was happening when Russia didn't want to admit to that. And again, the United States, of course, never wanted to admit that they intentionally targeted the Syrian uh, government at that time, but Russia countered with an attack on Aleppo's uh, secret base there that the U.S., along with Qatar, Saudis, Turks, were all colluding together in a fight against and controlling the operations of the Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, ISIS, and even that of the pre-Syrian army. Russia, using a bunker buster, killed many of those operatives, including one Israeli, one American, and I forget how many exactly it was from Qatar. Majority were from Saudi Arabia and Turkey as well. Turkey has never been on the side of Russia, and if Russia thinks they're on the side of Russia, I guess they'll find out when this all plays out in the end, because when the U.S. and Russia end up, if they end up in a battle in the Middle East here, Turkey is not going to side with Russia, as it seems to appear. And the reason I know this is because Turkey is being used as a key ally for Israel in the building of the third temple to bring about a false messiah, an antichrist spirit that they will call the messiah for Israel and to bring about a Middle East peace putting Turkey at the head of all of this or the Saudis or maybe they share it together. But they don't get along very well, do they? Well, maybe they do and we just think they don't. Never really know. Anyway, it's getting very interesting to say the least. And going on to another news here though, I wanted to share with you here and that is right here on this particular Russian report. It also uh, is an agreement with the Daily Caller that says U.S. could be headed for a major showdown with Iran and Russia in Syria. The Daily, uh, the Daily Caller writes here, the U.S. could increasingly find itself engaging Syrian regime, Iranian, or even Russian military assets as the campaign to retake the Islamic State capital of Raqqa escalates. The Syrian regime and Iranian mil militias have increasingly tried to encroach uh, on U.S. allied territory leading to warnings and occasional bombings. Iran is particularly concerned with U.S. influence inside of Syria despite American in insistence that its presence in the Syria, Syria is focused on defeating ISIS. Russia is also the main ally of the Syrian regime and has significant military assets inside the country. The chance for a catastrophic era is higher now than ever before the six-year-old civil war. U.S.-based intelligence advisories firm the Sofan Group noted on Tuesday. Same thing in this Russian article right here. It's what it says in the title there, that the risk of war with the U.S. is at the highest point ever. Even going so far as to say in the destruction of the International Coalition of the Syrian Su-22 became the starting point in the still undeclared war of the Western uh, countries against the Syrian regimes and its allies, Russia and Iran. This uh, opinion was expressed in the conversation with the federal news agency by military expert retired Colonel Viktor Levitkin. Recalled that on Sunday, the American fighter bomber F-A-18 Hor uh, Super Hornet shot down the Su-22 Air Force in Syria, according to the coalition headquarters. The aircraft allegedly carried out bombings in the immediate vicinity of the positions of forces of forces of the democratic Syria, south of the city of Tabak, 40 kilometers from Rocky. He says this though, American, Americans cover their people and try to improve their survival for further anti-government actions. In fact, there was no need to shoot down a Syrian plane. Just uh, Americans are determined to continue confront confrontation in the Middle East, the expert explains. So it is definitely headed for a showdown. And the fact that they're already somewhat fighting a proxy war against one another and the stepping up uh, of all this latest tensions is showing that. And if Russia continues to target ISIS militants heavily like they're doing now, if it truly is a U.S. backed or even if Israel is involved with the creation of ISIS as many have claimed that this is so, then we're going to find out that the war will definitely escalate because if ISIS is being heavily targeted by Russia, 
then we're going to see something is going to get completely out of control. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. And don't forget, we have that conference coming up in the United States. You want to get your tickets to that. They will not last long. It's still tickets are still available. Global versus flat earth.com. Check it out. I'm Stephen Benoon. See you in August 5th and 6th in Duluth, Georgia. Shalom.